Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what's the reality of the vibration emanated from who in Naqshbandi zikr in cleaning the ears? Because I feel a strong vibrating push coming out of the ears, sort of a clearing a block. Yes, alhamdulillah, that's, that's what we talked about tonight is the reality of these vibrations and energy. <clears throat> every zikr and every breath and everything that you're doing is based on energy. This world of malakut, the world of light is the world that we are interested in, not the world of dunya and form. If we change the focus to the world of malakut, the one whom has a ownership of malakut, he owns dunya, right? But unfortunately people are trying to own dunya. The one who owns dunya has no share in eternity, he made the wrong deal, right? Kulli shay? So what, which one? Which ayat al karim? Kulli malakut kulli shay? Ilayitu rija'oon with end of Sayyidina Yaseen, you say? Kulli shayin qadri means that all the energy, all the realities, kulli shay in the hand of the one whom has malakut. So the one whom seeks the malakut, the world of light, if he reaches sincerity in this surya seen from the perfection of yaqeen as sami he becomes Habib, he becomes loved by Allah because they're inheriting the reality of Muhammad and Rasulullah So in Surah Yaseen are all the habaibs, all the way of love. When Allah loves Prophet if you copy Prophet you become someone loved by Allah And then Allah teaching that if you have the hand of malakut in which Allah's blessed it and your hand is supported by Allah kulli shay, your hand reaches all of dunya. But shaitan make people think, no grab dunya you'll have so much power. But you grab the wrong banana, it became nothing, it's dying, it, it will wither away. And you end up in your life saying, this is what I got. I got. All of eternity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Eternity is a line that can't be understood from beginning to end. And they put their focus on the 70 years here and they put all their efforts on this here and they had no hand on eternity. And Allah giveth the reverse, no, no, go for the malakut. And if you struggle in malakut, I authorize your hand and you'll have entire power over dunya. Dunya is, is, is beholden to your hand and that's why we recite Surat Al-Mulk. Tabarak alladhi bi yadihi mulk. Allah will give a tabarak in your hand for all of mulk, but you have to achieve from Surat Al Yaseen. Allah Subhan, Allah's glory be upon the hand whom has the malakut. Kulli shay, it is all encompassing. Allah gave everything to the people of malakut, inshaAllah, because the inside controls the outside. So when the student understands, focus on the inside, that's the power. Shaitan even knows that reality. So when we focus on the inside with power, then all my inside practices are going to now have an effect on my outside issues. 
I'm going to breathe and these different zikrs are going to give a power to my soul and begin to correct everything in the world of form. So who and Ahlul Dhikr are all have who in their zikr because who is the essence of every atom. Every atom has like a battery, a power source. That power source is who. When they make the dhikr of who, they're taking from every element its essence, its power and bringing the power into their nafas. And they bring that power into their breath and it like explodes into their reality, powers their heart, powers their breath, powers their lungs, powers their, their organs. So has an immense power, that's why Allah قُلْ هُو Say, ooh. So it's immense power. So Allah's qaf and lam is directed to who? Qaf wal Qur'an al Majid and the lisan al haq qul who? So then there's an immense power out of who? And who is the source of all atoms? Everything manifesting its essence has who as its power. So when we recite who, we're asking to bring in, leave the garbage and bring the essence of that power into our reality. And that's why they can breathe in entire realities. Mawlana Shah Naqshban was capable of breathing in everything. Didn't matter who was in the association when he would breathe, he would breathe their entire realities into his reality, whoosh it, clean it, purify it and bring it back out. Because everything in a world of light is under kulli shay, every kulli shay, it's, that can't be understood. Everything has a light reality, right? These are all atoms and all under Muhammadun Rasulullah So ashaqeen they breathe in in every breath that reality is coming into them and exhaling out. So has an immense power to harness the zikr, harness the salawats, harness all the ismullah and then the dhikr of who inshaAllah. Has the immense power, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. What if we don't feel vibrations when listening to salawats? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Kai. You have to take yourself to feel. So that's again back onto these other talks that uh, and. The other time somebody asked something and somebody else replied and you know the blind see in color. Just because you're blind on this dunya they dream in color. So it doesn't, doesn't mean that people are handicapped, it means there are certain conditions that have to be met to get to that point. It's not as easy as I just say it and you feel it. That we said before, you have to be charitable, you have to be sincere, you have to be practicing continuously, you have to go out and be of service. You, there's so much to struggle against oneself because the ear is continuously hearing music, is continuously hearing backbiting, is continuously hearing television and radio, so it's already full. And it heard, that's what we just, if you understood the, the talk, then there's an immense power of hearing. So imagine all the things people hear in one day, what did it do to their heart that day? Do you think by the end of that day their heart should be dead? It's a miracle that the person lives to the next day with the amount of energy that been sent onto that ear, onto that soul and how much it put a burden onto the soul, onto the soul, onto the darkness of the soul. So imagine people doing that seven days with no zikr, no cleaning, no taskiyah. Then they do it 30 days, no taskiyah, no cleaning, no zikr. Imagine how much rust and calcification must be been put upon that heart, how much difficulty put upon that heart that it is become like iron, not latif, not subtle but became like iron and then become rusted like old metal and copper. 
So it requires zikrullahi tatma'ina quloob. It requires a zikr, a cleaning. And we said the best of cleaning is your sadaqah, your, your charity, your good deeds. It washes and cleanses the heart, the zikr that cleanses the heart, the salawats on Prophet that cleanse the heart, wash the heart. So that the heart has a khushya, a softness that as soon as they, they talk or think of something beautific they cry because it's so subtle and so soft. So we have to take ourselves to that point. There is nobody that can't do that. So it's just a matter of how much we want to struggle for that. So we can't have those types of things where people, oh, I can't do it, I can't see. That, that as soon as you put up a negative barrier you're already defeated and you're doomed. So if I say I can't do something then I'm making sure and I'm manifesting that I will never be able to do it. And if I don't have that in my vocabulary and I don't have that in my thought process then it becomes everything is achievable because I'm setting a barrier. So there's no way I can go up those stairs. Oh because of course you won't go, you'll never go because you've set the limit and it won't happen. But if we say to ourselves, Allah works in miraculous ways, hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel. There's no way to understand how Allah will make something happen and if it's meant to happen. So we say there are no barriers and we accomplish whatever needs to be accomplished. And Allah can fold space and time and make the servant to achieve what is needed to be achieved. But don't defeat ourselves before we even began the process inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam rahmatullah. When our ears are not safe from the guidance of others, how can we protect ourselves when they are speaking? For example, at work, public or family when we can't get away. No, khalwa da anjuman, that becomes the, the teaching is that many times people talk and I don't listen, I'm gone. Learn how to shut your ears off, let anybody talk all they want because you can't walk away from everything, talk all they want and in your heart you're doing your zikr. They're amongst the crowd but they're with Allah and the tariqah is based on khalwa dar anjuman. We're not the tariqah that run to the mountains, none of our shaykhs are mountain people. This tariqah was based be amongst people because that was harder. If I want to run to the mountain and hide that's a very easy job. But to be amongst the people is the most difficult. So Naqshaban, Mawlana Shah Naqshaban is a khalwa, seclude yourself, dar anjuman, amongst the people. So then you have to have a strong training discipline. People talk and you're doing your zikr. People talk, you're making your salawats. And you're polite and nobody has to say, oh you're not, you're zoned out again. No, you just smile and make your salawat. So you, you, it's an art, it's an art in which you, you just zone out and train yourself on how to be there but not be there. But if you say, oh what? What? What happened? Oh my God! And then you start to in, in, in inject your opinions, then you take it to heart and you become an active participant in that sort of bad action. But one whom just sitting there as an innocent bystander and zikr and busy with themselves inshaAllah. And you train yourself to do that with your children, with family, with everything because they want to talk, they want children time, they want all different things so you train yourself, inshaAllah. Mm -hmm. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is the spectrum of light we can't see related to the thing we can't hear? Yeah I don't know how to answer that. So in, in the spectrum of light is based on a training and what we can't hear is a different reality than what you can't see because of the spectrum of light. So it's not necessarily that your hearing opens and you see all of the spectrum. So 
the entire spectrum of light is not necessary. So it's a different conditioning and, and a different training. So the one whom has a, an acute hearing doesn't mean that now they can see infrared red signals because Allah doesn't find that necessary for that servant. Some may have the ability to see different colors for different purposes. But it's not necessary in their spiritual development that the sensitivity to their spiritual hearing necessarily unlock the hues of dunya colors. So the vision in which is important is a vision through the reflection of the heart into their spiritual reality. So Naqshbandiya its pardeh is not opened on dunya. Means that as soon as they come into Naqshbandiya they're taken up to Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faizi Dagestani's maqam. If they sit in a Naqshbandi association under Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faizi Dagestani Qaddas Sallallahu Siru, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani Qaddas Sallallahu Siru, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Shaykh Hisham, Mawlana Shaykh Adnan, all of them who brought this reality from <coughs> Sultan al Awliya Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faizi Dagestani that if they sit in the association for five minutes they'll grab their soul and take that up to the maqam of their reality. So they already achieved immense realities five minutes into the program. But now their project is to come from that maqam back down into their dunya. So Naqshbandiya is based on cleaning your bad character coming downward, not lifting the veils going up. Because if you lift the veil going up you lose all the students because as soon as they come they sit, oh I can see now this color and they don't come to zikr anymore because they're so fascinated and they think they arrived. So then they start to unveil the student and they begin to hallucinate and see and Naqshbandiya is not uh, interested in that. So it means that the only vision for Ahlul Basira for them is to see the shaykh in their muraqabah. And then see their shaykh's shaykhs and all the way up to the presence of Prophet That light that emanates from that energy in that ocean, they fine tune their vision and their quest. Their quest is not to see, Ya Rabbi I don't need to see, I just need to be with them and feel their qudra and their energy. But as a result of the energy flowing to them they naturally see the, the one whom they're sitting in their presence. So that's what's important, not the pursuit of do I see purple, do I see yellow and th these different colors and so th this, that's something different. But fine tuning what we're asking for, right? So we're not asking to have visions and all night long thinking we saw something, this was given to me, that was given to me, that I'm nothing at up, I'm not interested in those things. I'm asking to enter into your oceans of power, I want to reach to where the qudra is flowing and then they visualize their soul in these oceans of power and that's what's important and they begin to feel the power that emanates upon their soul and in their heart inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam I'm new to tariqah and would like to know the reality behind taking bayt allegiance. Oh we have a whole bunch of talks on the allegiance. <clears throat> on the allegiance. I think. When was the, the talk on the allegiance in Muharram? And uh, the year before I think we talked on the, the reality of the bayat and that it is, uh, it is the foundation of Islam because your ahad and your covenant is what you're trying to accomplish with Islam. Means that on the day of promises when we're in the world of light Allah gave a decree, you are this, 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 I am your Lord and we said, bala, yes. That was our covenant with Allah and it was detailed that you would go to the earth, you would do this, you would achieve this, you would give this, you would do this, 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 you would follow this. And everybody was under this contract, they said, yes. When they come to earth, Prophet described that a believer can never be a liar because I know many people who believe and they lie. 
And then Mawlana said, no, it's not this lie, that lie that people make on a daily basis, but the lie to Allah that you cannot think that you're going to return back to Allah and say, no, I didn't make that promise. I was a good guy, I, I did something, you know, good things and I was okay but I didn't make that promise. Allah will play the cassette through your eyes that you were told these things, you said yes and I sent you to earth, you forgot everything and came back. So you give your kids ten dollars, go buy me some milk, come home. The kid takes the ten dollars, goes to arcade, comes back five o'clock at night, hey, he said, what do you mean hey? I sent you out to get some milk. What? No you didn't. What are you talking about? I gave you ten dollars to get milk and come back home. But he went into the arcade to play. But only our teaching, we can't lie to Allah That's not how you want to go back to Allah So Islam was peace and submission. And so how Prophet brought Islam, inna ladina yubayyunuka yubayyunullah. Take my hand and when you take my hand, Allah's hand is on our hand. Now you have to fulfill your covenant to Allah So the tariqahs hold that same reality because it is the way of Prophet That the shaykh takes the hand because he's the representation of Muhammadun Rasulullah As soon as you take your bayad with the shaykh, Allah hand upon their hand, upon the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. As soon as you've taken the hand, then now you've fulfilled the first step in achieving your covenant with Allah Because now you have a role in achieving your ahad. So Surah Tawbah was about the bayat, that they they took their bayat to achieve their ahad, their covenant with Allah so means but again by negation, if you don't have bayat, how would you ever achieve your covenant with Allah So then your Islam is a fake Islam where you think you're submitting, you feel that you're good and that's okay. But that's not the level of perfection and guidance. When Allah says, when somebody's guided, they are guided, means they're guided towards completing their covenant. Then you find that all of the shaykh's teachings are to accomplish that covenant. So what's your covenant with Allah To submit, perfect your hearing, to perfect your character, to love Prophet more than you love yourself. If you achieve that you'll know who you are and what you're supposed to do. But without that the shaykh doesn't need to tell people what they're going to do, oh you're going to be like this, you're going to be like that, oh you're going to be like that, that's not necessary. But what everybody needs to do is they have to perfect themselves, clean themselves, have good character, good akhlaq. Once they clean themselves and put upon themselves the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad then with that light they understand what they're supposed to do. They understand their God-given skill to talk and they'll talk about the love. The God-given skill to, to produce and to create and they'll create for that love. Everybody knows their ability or will know their real ability but it has to be based on a foundation of akhlaq and character what we talked in Muharram. This way is based on humility and, and good character. As a result then they build with muhabbat and love of Prophet then the person is a viable for their reality and what their covenant with Allah The one whom is generous has always been generous. Either he's buying inappropriate things for the wrong people because he's a generous person, Allah addressed them with generosity. Shaitan took that characteristic and made that person to be his murid and he uses their generosity for satanic purposes. But if they come to guidance then with good character and all these examples we gave, then they'll use their generosity towards Allah's way and that becomes the covenant. So the reality of the tariqahs and bayat is to complete our covenant. Without the bayat how do you complete your covenant and how do you even enter into Islam 
when you don't know what you promised Allah and how are you going to even fulfill what you promised Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can we renew our bayat today? InshaAllah. <laughs> and with that then we'll do our khatam inshaAllah. Let's, let's get to my phone inshaAllah. <coughs> <coughs> Where's the bayat on this? InshaAllah. Let me take this. InshaAllah, making intention to Naqshbandiyat al Aliyah, bayat to Sultan al Awliya, Ma Shaykh Abdullah Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Mahakali, Ma Shaykh Muhammad Adil, in the barakah of Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani. A'fa'awzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-radeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Inna al-ladheena yubayyunaka ayna ma yubayyunullah, yaad Allahi fa'awk aydihim. Amma al-naqadu fa inna ma yaghusu ala nafsi wa man awfa bima ahad, alayhi Allah fa sayyatun ajran azeem. Raditu billahi rabban wa islami deenan wa ba Sayyidina Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulun wa nabiyun wa bi Qur'ani kitaban wa Allahumma naqulu wakeel wa hamdalillahi rabbil alameen. Wa qabilna bi Sayyidina Sultanin awliya ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Shaykhuna wa Murshidina wa Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Shaykhuna wa Murshidina Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Shaykhuna wa Murshidina fi barakata awliya Allah, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani wa Allahumma naqulu wakeel. Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haq Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haq Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haq Haqqu Ya Rabbi illa sharif al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa ala mashayhina fi tariqat al-Nashbandiyyat al-Aliyya khasatan ruhi man tariqa qawta khaliqa shal Nashband Muhammad Waisi al-Bukhari, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Abd al-Faiz al-Daghestani, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Ma'abd al-Khaliq al-Khujdawani, Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sayyidina Abbaqa Siddiq, Sayyidina Umma, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatina Fatima tiza alayhi salam, Wa sayyir wa saadatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha. As salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.